Good morning, dear students. Welcome to your to another edition of your English class. And before we start your class, one thing which I would like to tell is that yes, whatever we had syllabus the previous year, we have already done the explanation for that syllabus okay and for this year nothing has been told about the syllabus so we cannot simply depend upon the last year syllabus okay so we have to keep on continuing with the topics that we have in your text so MBC has not uh, tells us anything about whether we have to follow the reduced syllabus or whether we have to follow the complete syllabus okay so we cannot simply take risk by studying only the reduced syllabus so today in this class so what you have to understand is that whatever were the topics in the reduced syllabus we have already finished okay but because we cannot take any chances so we have to keep on continuing dealing with the other topics okay so keeping in view those things or those points today we are going to continue with the topic which was not there in your reduced syllabus but it is also a part of your syllabus okay so today we are going to start with a new topic and we are going to start with flamingo okay and today we will not deal with your prose section but today we are going to deal with your poetry section today we are going to deal with a very short poem the title of the poem is Aunt Jennifer's Tigers written by Adrian Rich okay so it's a very short poem and in this poem what Adrian Rich is trying to bring out is that he's talking he's going to talk about now what we have to understand is that Aunt Jennifer Jennifer's Tiger is a poem written by Adrian Rich which brings out her views and her feminist concerns okay in a bed in a we are living in a, in a world which is dominated dominated by the male a woman of her time was only supposed to be a dutiful a dutiful okay a housemaker and this poem in this poem we see through the world of Aunt Jennifer okay and the poet she tells us about her inner desire to free herself from the clutches of an abusive marriage and patriarchal society so in a way in this poem what Adrienne Rich is trying to do is that she is trying to address the constraint of a married life a woman experience okay how she loses her freedom once a girl a uh, once a, lady, a girl become a married woman so what actually she's trying to do is that she's trying to bring out the constraint that a woman experiences when she gets married okay and in this poem she talks about a woman's experiences in her married life and she has tried to explore the inner feelings of a woman who is living under the dominance of a man okay let's start the poem the poem is divided into three stanzas 
okay very short it has all together 12 lines but in these 12 lines she's able to bring out her ideas okay anyway we'll start aunt jennifer's tigers prance across the screen bright to pass denizens of a world of green they do not fear the men beneath the tree they pace in sleek chivalric certainty now this in this poem the poet she is talking about a lady and whom she addresses as aunt jennifer okay the poet is describing a lady whom she addresses as aunt jennifer and she says that aunt jennifer is doing embroidery on a piece of cloth okay which could be any cloth okay which could be a tablecloth or a wall hanging and in this piece of embroidery she has designed the piece of cloth with beautiful tigers who are running fearlessly in the green forest okay She has described their beauty, that is the beauty of the tiger, by comparing them, comparing them with precious yellow stone known as topaz. She says that they appear bright yellow in the green backdrop of the forest. They are fearless and they are not affected by the presence of men. Okay. They are not affected by the presence of men. Here we can see the contrast between contrast of behavior between the tiger and aunt. Though the tiger designed by her are fearless, but she herself is afraid of her husband. Further, the poet says that the tigers are proud and fearless citizens of the forest. They are very shiny and elegant. Okay. And then in the same lines, okay, she talks about how they walk. Okay, how the tigers they are walking. Or they are running in a sleek chivalric certainty okay that is what we are told about in the first stanza in the stanza we are introduced to a piece of embroidery in which a tiger is being shown in which tigers are being shown to us okay And we are told that yes, they are not afraid of the peep of the people or the men who are standing under the tree. And these tigers they are very well groomed, they look honorable and brave, and when they pace when they walk, okay, and when they pace or when they run fast, they are full with confidence and certainty. That is what we are told in the first stanza. Anyway, look at the second stanza. Another, uh, sorry, Aunt Jennifer's fingers fluttering through her wool find even the ivory needle hard to pull. The massive weight of Uncle's wedding band sits heavily upon Aunt Jennifer's hand. Here in these lines, the poet describes the fear of Aunt Jennifer towards her husband. She says that while Aunt Jennifer is doing her embroidery, okay, uh, 
her fig fingers, they are moving about her wool. Her fingers are shaking with fear of her husband. Her husband, it seems, does not approve of her hobby of embroidery. Okay, therefore, she trembles. Here we are told that Aunt Jennifer's fingers are moving about her wool, but she is finding she is it has become difficult for her to pull her needle up and down. Then she describes the wedding ring which was given by uncle to Aunt Jennifer on their wedding day. And she says that it is a kind of burden for her to wear this ring. The heavy weight of uncle's wedding band that had bonded them together still lies heavy upon Aunt Jennifer's hands. And it seems that she has been tortured by her husband so much that the wedding ring, which could have been a beautiful gift for her, seems like a burden to her. She has faced so many difficulties in her married life that the little ring is described as a heavy band on her trembling fingers. This means that the ring is associated with some bad experiences in the form of torture she has faced because of her husband dominating behavior. Now in this stanza we find that yes, while Aunt Jennifer is doing that piece of embroidery and her fingers they are moving about her wool and we find that she is finding it very difficult to pull that ivory needles, needles which is made of ivory, okay. She is finding it difficult because she has been burdened. In her married life. Okay. Now next part. Next answer. When aunt is dead. Her terrified hands will lie. Still ring with ordeals she was mastered by. The tigers in the panel that she made. Will go on prancing. Proud and unafraid. Here in this line, we are told that Aunt Jennifer will not be free from fear even after her death. The poet says that one can easily sense Aunt, Gen Aunt Jennifer's desire for freedom and fearlessness through her design of a tiger. But she says that it is not possible for Aunt to achieve this freedom during her lifetime. She will attain it only after her death, but here also the irony of her life is that still she will be tied up with the shackles in the form of her husband's wedding ring. The ring was the sole proof of the torture which she had faced from her husband. And we are told that her terrified hands will lie in the grip of hard and unpleasant experiences of her past married life. Difficult times had suppressed and crushed her. That is what she has experienced in her marriage okay but at the same time on the other hand there are tigers which were designed by Aunt Jennifer and these tigers they depict her desire of being free the tigers are nothing else but she's depict, trying to depict her freedom okay the freed the freedom that she longed for and here we are told that yes, while she has been crushed all her life, while she had lived a life of being, 
she has lived a life of hard experiences experiences okay but the tiger which she has made in the panel they will go on jumping ahead proud and unafraid these tigers designed by aunt jennifer it is nothing else but it depicts her desire of living a fearless life okay and these tigers they will always be depicted the same on their piece of cloth okay the, the embroidery the piece of embroidery okay and in this piece we find that these tigers they are jumping proudly and bravely on the piece of cloth and they are unafraid okay and that is what aunt jennifer also wants to do okay now in this line we find that even after her death the ring will remain on her hand and she will never be free but at the same time the tigers that she has embroidered embroidered okay they will continue to move the world around freely and her desire of freedom and fearlessness will live on through these tigers okay and that is what the poem on Jennifer Aunt Jennifer's Tigers is all about okay so we'll stop here for this class and we'll continue in the next class anyway thank you